Welcome back to this special and remote place in the Orkney Islands of Scotland. My parents have been farming sheep on this island for nearly half a century, but advancing age and ill health have now made life here much more tricky. So I've paused my career as a TV reporter to come home to help. This is On To Other News, episode two. It's morning in Auskerry. While some farmers may be woken by a cockerel, here the morning call is made by a black guillemot. Locally, they're known as tysties, with their characteristic red feet. This one has a nest right beside the house. The chicks are noisily calling for their parent to deliver breakfast. The adult, though, is more wary of showing any other larger birds where her nest is. But the chicks, to her credit, also know when it's safer to stay quiet. When my brothers and I were growing up here, this steading used to be full of noise and activity and birds rarely nested so near the house. But since we flew the nest, plenty of other life has made a home here instead. Ausgeri is just three quarters of a mile long and covers about 250 acres up to the average tide line. It's home to two people, my parents, and around 700 sheep. 500 of those need to be clipped every year all by us and all by hand. (laughs) Even on a busy day at the sheep pens, Dad always has time for a chat. (laughs) Once they're all gathered again, we sort and let the lambs out. My partner Faye has managed to book two weeks off her work in Cardiff in order to work here on our scary. Have you got hold of her there? Yeah. She already knows how to clip, but after a year since her last visit, today she's getting a refresher course from the master. Yeah, lovely. Keep going in the same trajectory, but feel her body. So with the far side of the blade, you're feeling her body so that you're just slightly tipped up. Dad was always an expert hand shearer. He learned the technique from other farmers back in the 70s when he first moved to Orkney. <laughs> I, I thought it was Saturday, even possibly Sunday. But when I was told it was Friday, that was a delight because I love Friday and Saturday. Despite advances in technology, we've never been tempted by the noisier and more cumbersome electric shears that most farmers use now. Okay. Very well done. That was very quick, very quick. And that wasn't to be Faye's only success of the day. On our lunch break, she spotted some very special visitors to the island. While I ran frantically to grab my camera, the sheep kept watch out to sea. And then they reappeared. Oh, there they are again. Oh, there they are! Did you get them? The sheep eating seaweed on the low tide weren't phased as two adults and two baby orcas cruised around the lighthouse point of the island. That was brilliant. I've never seen orcas before in sea world or otherwise. And it was fantastic. They were so near the end. Oh, they're just breached again now. Um, they were so near the end of the south side of the island, obviously having a little look for some seals. And then they came round to the pier. But yeah, brilliant. And it's, it looks like a mother and a baby. This one's a lot bigger. And yeah, the fins are so sharp. Like, they look so sturdy. Brilliant. What a cool experience. Nature spotting over, it's back to the day job. And now you've seen Faye learn how to clip a sheep. Now it's your turn. First of all, 
I'm going to clean up the brisket. You can leave a bit here because they lie on this bit. It keeps them warm, but most of her belly is gone anyway. I'm going to just give it a bit of a cut down the side to open that side up. Down this side while she's sitting, down the leg, following the feel of the shape of the body down. Let's wrap the rise again now. Mostly she's got a good rise. And I'm just cutting around because I can. You want to keep her face down. You don't want to cut the skin, so you have to be careful. And you then, as you pull the fleece apart, tuck this side down inside your leg. Then you can take the wool off the rest of her throat. Not too much, because you don't want to end up with double cuts. And you don't want to go beyond the spine much at that. She's very relaxed. Again, if she started getting twitchy, I'd stop, but that's fine. And then I pull her up as I move, and then I'll bring her head up, where she'll be happier. And that's her finished. I'll check her teeth. She's in good neck. She can go. <laughs> Me, me, and the fleece is rolled by leaving the outside uppermost and then rolling up tightly from the bottom. And here's the neck. You don't twist it, you just pull it a bit. There it is. One more at fleece straight in the bag. Meanwhile, as the afternoon fades into the early evening, Faze got into her groove. In the summer months, when family and friends come to stay, there's plenty of things to keep everyone entertained. And while there's evidence of human habitation on the island of Ausgeri for various periods over the last 5,000 years, I suspect my mum was the first to bring the game of croquet here. OK, so the correct way to do a croquet ball is like that. OK. Oh, cheeky! There can't be many other croquet lawns where playing the surface also means avoiding the sheep poo. You were exactly. Oh, oh, devastating. A bit more poo that should have been removed, I think, there, Faye. Sorry. Oh. And I would even actually move slightly around. I think you're right there the first time. And then swing gently, don't overdo it. I think everyone got into it in the end. So now we've got to make sure that we don't leave the hoops in because the last two years we've left them in too long and the sheep have gone off with a couple of them and they've disappeared. You think you can easily see them when the grass is so short but actually they disappear into the ground and it's not until the winter that you find them again. So we've got all six but it was a touch and go for a while. <laughs> It's just wonderful and it makes me realise just how much fun over the years we've had with it. People coming out here, everyone has their own dynamic. Things just develop and forget all that stuff and just enjoy being out and about and doing fun things and using, using your muscles the way they're designed to be worked. Running and catching sheep and all the jobs that you need to do, lifting things. That, that's what we're designed to do as human beings. Now you're stuffed, you've got to do two yeah, nose really. that's sad. <laughs> ah, devastated. I've been thinking quite a lot about it and it, it does make me sad thinking that this won't be happening much more, but 
I just have to tell myself that, you know, it can't go on for, nothing can go on forever. And it needs young people here, new enthusiasm and energy. Yeah! Woo! Wait a second, come on. I hope that we find somebody who wants to take it on, but if we don't, well, Ausgerry gave us, you know, nearly 50 years of a lot of different emotions, but so many good memories of fun with people and people, nobody comes here and is not changed by Ausgerry. Whatever way it is, they never forget it. I mean, there was Cormac, he was here when he was six. He remembers it. He remembers it quite vividly. And I, I think that's just so special. Everybody who's been here wants to see it keep going if it can, but if it can't, well, it was good while it lasted. Thank you for watching On To Other News. Next time. I think they're grumpy that you disturbed their rest. Faye and I go for a chat with the seals. They look very indignant. There's so many, wow. Dad spots one of the most beautiful baby birds that live here. I just love them to bits. And they're as brave as hell. And for perhaps the last ever time, I get to work on the peat we use for fuel. It makes me very sad, but, but then happy too, because we've got so much to remember. And who else can, who can say anything else? Everybody has to move on in life when they get older. <laughs>